Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris and in today's episode, you would not guess it, but we are continuing on with our VGC Series 10 content and we've got another rental team to feature from another one of you fine viewers and today's team is courtesy of Scott. Scotty W is his handle that he uses online and it is a Zashian team. So Scotty, when he passed this over, he did say it was a very standard Zashian team with Garchomp. Uh, Garchomp... Uh, a Pokemon that we don't, haven't really seen too much of in Series 10, so it did pique my interest when he sent it over, and it's always nice to feature teams when they are sent across. So, and just a little reminder, if you have a rental team that you'd like to see featured on the channel, uh, do send it over, Discord, DM, whatever you want, or drop it in the comments, and we will try and feature it. We've got a bunch more to feature next week on the channel, so we're rounding off nicely this week with Scotty's team that he has passed over to us. So we've got the Zashin, pretty standard here with the subset. It's probably one of my more favoured sets. I do like the sword stance, but the sub gives you a lot of room in matches where... Um, the, the sword stance is a bit more punishing I guess uh, so nice to kind of feature that again we've got the incineral with the assault vest a nice variant obviously with the throat chop there something that we haven't played too much of on the channel it's a really nice tech that gives you that dark stab as well obviously having to rely on U-turn, no parting shot there but a bit more of an offensive incineral I'd assume then you've got the Rillaboom again with protect there not something that you see on it too often but relying more on the grassy glide the U-turn the Garchomp great combination between the rough skin and then that Rocky Helmet really going to punish any contact moves that come onto Garchomp. A great switch in when you suspect things like Fake Out in particular. Got Break and Swipe to lower a target's attack and then you got Stomp and Tantrum and Stealth Rock which is a really interesting tech to have on here. Something that I've always thought about. It's a big play in singles but it's never really made that transition over to VG and it would be interesting to see how well it gets on today because it's all something I've theorized right back even back to like 2013 yes i'm very old but at the same time i do think it's something that could have some utility in vg so be nice to see how it gets on today and then you've got the standard kind of suicune with the safety goggles gets that alleviation from rage powder redirection um and any spore type moves <coughs> <clears throat> and then rounding the team off with Amoongus. Got the Pollen Puff, got the Protect, Rage Powder, and Spore. Pretty standard Amoongus there with the Citrus Berry. So there's a rental code for the team. Big shout out to Scott again. Uh, we'll have a couple of games with the team now. Hopefully run into some meta teams and uh, some interesting matches. And then we will round up with the rental at the end of the episode, friends. So hope you enjoy today's episode. Um, and without further ado, we'll jump into game one. First up, we have Mike playing a team of Kyogre, Serena, Incineroar, Landorus Incarnate, Whimsicott, and Zapdos. Pretty standard kind of looking Kyogre team, at least at the moment. Obviously, excluding the Tornadus here. Replacing that with the Whimsicott gives you a little more of a uh, uh, varying support options like Encore, the Terrain support, and so on. And you still get that Tailwind that can... Um, support the Kyogre and you've also got access to things like fake tears that support a lot of Pokemon on this team so you've got to suspect all those kind of options there. Zapdos as well um, another inclusion it's gonna be a little bit difficult for some of our Pokemon to deal with especially the Zashian it can't really hit it for very good damage um, and if it has got the Rocky Helmet like you would expect it is gonna be a, a bit annoying to deal with for sure. Um, okay I think what are we gonna do? I like I like the idea of Garchomp as a lead, to be honest, with the stealth rock. If we could get the stealth rock up, that would be that would be pretty good. Um but it's getting around <clears throat> it's getting around the fake out, isn't it? Um We got boom, because I think we need boom in this match. Um it's like do I want Incineroar? Probably do want Incineroar. Um or we could go on Moongus. The other thing is do we go Suicune because then it matches the um no, I think we got double double fake out, intimidate, Zash and Garchomp for this one. Yeah, this week can provides a tailwind support. We can kind of keep pace with my opponent, but I think we can do without, and I think we can position ourselves well enough with our kind of uh, uh, the, t the 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 meta twins of Rillaboom and Incineroar. So let's see. Obviously, the Serena causes us a few issues, but. Um, it's not terrible. We've got to watch out for the Whimsicott as well. It can just go directly for a Moonblast turn one. But I think you're probably more concerned about getting that Tailwind control onto the field. I really want to get the Stealth Rocks up onto the field, to be honest, here. Um, and I'm going to go for that. And I'm going to go for that. And a U-turn. And expect probably Tailwind, yep. 
Probably a power whip from the Serena, but it's going to get... Heck, mm, going for the Reflect. Interesting. Mm, I like it. I likey, likey. Okay, well, we get the Stealth Rock up. There we go. So we've got that. Let's see how this works out this game. Um, everyone's setting up. Boom, going to just remove itself from the field. Get some decent-ish damage onto that Serena. And um, we'll get, <clears throat> I think, Zashin onto the field now. Why not? Why not? We've got to be careful with how we use this sub this game because of Encore, of course. We get that Intrepid Sword boost. Uh, I think we've got a pretty nice switch in to Rillaboom this next turn or to Incineroar. Probably makes a little more sense to bring the Incineroar in as it's got the Assault Vest. It's going to be able to take those attacks a little better. And I think we just go for... Hmm, we could go for the player rough. Behemoth Blade's probably the attack to go for. Although we could expect to see maybe Kyogre come in on the Serena slot. If it does switch out at all, it may not. But the Intimidate's going to be more than useful if the Serena stays on the field at least. Uh, and we'll see what this Whimsicott calls for. At least getting rid of the Serena means that we can utilize our fake outs. You know, that's the big thing. We see the Giga Drain come into that Incineroar there from Wimmy, which is an interesting option there. Uh, as you don't generally see that in the Triple Axle, is going to hit. No, it just hits the once, so we'll take that all day long as we get our free Behemoth Blade into the Serena slot. Is it going to be enough? I don't know, behind the Reflect. That's one, no. But another one will. Another one definitely will. The other option here is what we could do is potentially double into this Whimsicott slot, right? We double into Wimmy here because then we remove the Tailwind threat as well. And the Tailwind's going to end in like one, one turn, two turns, two turns. So yeah, it's a good opportunity where we can go after the Wimmy. Behemoth Blade as well. Because the Serena is not really putting too much pressure onto our side of the field at the minute, right? See another Giga Drain it's coming into the Zashin this time. Doing some decent... Well, ah, it's not bad, it's not bad. It's not amazing damage. And another Giga Drain. Double Gigas. Uh, getting that health back. So... I'm going to recover a little bit of health. But like I say, even behind the Reflect, we should be able to get the Whimsicott this turn. Especially the double up here. And getting rid of that Tailwind support is the, the big thing that we need to do now. So, do take the Whimsicott down to its Sash. And then we've only got to stall that one turn of Tailwind. And then we're kind of good to go from there, really. Um, you can bring him Rillaboom. I think it puts a bit of pressure on to the Kyogre in particular. Oh, yeah, we don't want Garchomp coming in. I think Rillaboom. But it's interesting now because my opponent's not switching around because of the, the Stealth Rock. Probably not because of that. But, you know, it is an added feature that we've got now. Anything that comes in will take a little bit of damage on the way in, which is always useful and could be kind of the what we need to kind of close this matchup if we, if we go forward from there. So, like I say, we've got to stall out the next Tailwind turn and then it will end and then we can go from there we do see Incineroar come in so that's actually not too bad because I think what we could do now is mm, we have to protect we have to protect we could just switch into our own Incineroar I think here yeah, and get the opposing Serena down to minus two get the Incineroar down to minus one protect Zashian and then we've got Potentially a way, to, well, we've got a definite way to get rid of the Serena the next turn. We probably then just U-turn, pivot out into the opposing Incineroar. Because it's likely that the Serena's probably got the Assault. Has it got the Assault Vest? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it has. Maybe it hasn't. Let's see where they go. Fake out into our Incineroar, which is fine. And triple Axel. So go on after the, the Rillaboom there. So, um, getting all three hits this time, which is all right. So, I think we're pretty safe in the fact that we can probably, hmm, it depends how much. I mean, we probably want to double in on the, the, the Serena just to make sure uh, it makes sense to go for the Behemoth Blade. Got to worry about the Flare Blitz, of course, from the Incineroar. They are minus one, but it's still going to do a, a decent amount of damage. And if they pull out something like a Protect on the Serena now, that could be pretty bad for us. But it might be... I don't know. I don't think we will. We may see Kyogre switch in for the Serena, but then it weakens. It weakens the um, 
the Flare Blitz, which you don't want to do if you're the Incineroar player here. Oh, I don't think a U-turn's even going to be enough. Uh, maybe. Oh, just about, so we get to utilize. Yeah, we get to utilize our Fake Outs, our Grassy Glide and stuff again. Thing is, though, what we want to try and do here is be a bit more pragmatic because the Grassy Terrain is going to end, I think, this turn. So we don't want to bring Rilla in now to have to switch it out, to switch it back in again, you know. Uh, the Flare Blitz is going to come out into Sashin, but minus one, we should take this. Yeah. Say come. Ah, ah, of course. <laughs> oh, the burn. Okay, well, hmm. not ideal, but not the end of the world. A reflect finally wears off on my opponent's side of the field. There's a grassy terrain leaving, and uh, Kyogre is going to make its way onto the field. I mean, a stomping tantrum is going to get the incineral from the Garchomp now, and then that just leaves. Boom to, to deal with the Kyogre, which is pretty pretty straightforward from here. So that's kind of fine. Uh, and uh, you can see the um, Stealth Rock doing a nice chunk of damage on entry. Free damage, you know. So you can't really complain about that. We'll get that Stomp and Tantrum into uh, the Incineral. And we'll go for a Play Rough into the Kyogre. Just get some damage onto it. Because Grassy Glide is going to be enough to kind of pick it up anyway. We've got the Miracle Seed on the Boom. So... It will be enough to get the Kyogre when we do get Boom onto the field, and that's all we want to do. We don't want to switch it in, take any unnecessary damage at this point. We've got two healthy Pokemon in the back that can kind of come in and disrupt and close this game out for us if we need to. Like I say, a Stomp and Tantrum should be enough to get the Incineroar here. We do connect with the Play Rough, do actually decent damage here. Oh, it's Scarfed. It's going to get the Garchomp. Nah. It's not, not strong enough to get the Garchomp. This is the other thing that Garchomp has going for it, you know. It it has the Dragon Titan, so it's not, like, super effective. Uh, oh, it's not super weak to the water. Is able to take attacks like that a little bit better. Summon Tantrum, actually not enough to get the Incineroar here. But, again, not really. That The Incineroar's gone. The Incineroar's gone. The Rocky Helmet and the Rough Skin. Gonna work. Yeah. Gone. Gone. Bye-bye. It's nice that we get to see that kind of come into play as well. Um, so yeah, the Stomp and Tantrum, we weren't lying. It, it was able to pick up the knockout onto the Incineral. Just need that little extra help. And now we get the boom back onto the field. And Kyogre's starting to cry. Starting to cry. So we might see the forfeit here. We may do. May not. Let's protect Garchomp. I don't know why we're protecting, just for the sake of it. We want to preserve Gotcham. Gotcham done such a good job this game. There we go, the battle cancelled. So we do pick up a nice victory to kick us off with today. But very good game to my opponent. Uh, a nice team and some nice techs on Pokemon that you kind of wouldn't expect those techs on, especially the refre Reflect on the Serena. Uh, it did talk about Assault Vest, I think, through that match. But of course, it didn't have Assault Vest because it had Reflect. So yeah, ignore me. If you were about to type that in the comments, I've just saved myself. I've saved you from doing it. So there we go. Anyway, good game to my opponent. We'll jump into game two of today's episode. Okay, next up, we have a Dusk Maiden across my Galarian, Zapdos, Incineroar, Amoongus, Tapu Fini, and Mimikyu. Great looking team. You've got that combination between the Dusk Maiden across my and the Mimikyu there. You've got the Trick Room set up. You've got the actual set up between the Shadow Sneak and the Weakness Policy potentially on that Dusk Man. It's going to be difficult to deal with, but we do have some good Pokemon in the team to help us deal with those threats. A Tabu Fini is going to be a bit disruptive for us in the respect that if they can keep the Misty Terrain on the field, then Amoongus can't really perform under Trick Room like we'd want it to. Um, it does mean that if we bring that, we likely have to bring something like Rillaboom to the match as well. Um, and then you've got Galarian Zapdos. Got to be careful with our Incineroar because of the Intimidate and then the Amoongus as well on the other side of the field which is going to cause us a few issues. I do like Suicune here. It can burn things like the Dustman and the Crosma um, and set up Tailwind and Raw. Uh, so I, yeah and it's got the safety goggles gives it a bit of immunity against things like that Amoongus. Um, so yeah I think Suicune's a nice pick here for sure. But what do we got? Do we got Suicune, Garchomp, uh, oh, I don't know if we do. I don't know if we got room. I think we need to go like boom. So let's go Zashin. Let's go Incineroar and let's go boom. I think. Yeah, I think I think we need all of those. I think we need all of those. So no Garchomp here. No Moongus either, which is a bit strange. The Trick Room element that we'll be playing against, but 
I don't think we need it. I don't think we need it. I don't think we need it. I think Dustman, like Dustman's always going to be a threat, you know, especially if he's got the weakness policy like you'd expect it to have. Um, but you got to think about it from their point of view, like we've got Rage Powder as well, which, which makes it a little bit more difficult for the Mimikyu to kind of get that set up going. So uh, I didn't mention it in team preview, but it is something that can um, put your opponent off kind of going for that. And we do see the Duskman and the Incineroar come out from my opponent. Um, now we could just prevent the, 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 the Trick Room going up straight away and just go for a roll reset. A drop and just get Incineroar onto the field. And I know we're going to be kind of a bit counterintuitive here where we are. Um, going to be roaring out an Intimidate onto the Duskman, which is always useful. But at the same time, we prevent the Trick Room, which makes things a little bit easier for us going forward. Um, and just withdraw the Incineroar. And um, they are bringing in Tappy Finny. Okay. That's fine. Get that Misty Terrain onto the field. Give it a little bit of protection. Prevents that burn damage as well. But it's alright. Because, we, I mean, we still got uh, Rillaboom. And yeah, they were going for the Trick Room. Galarian Zapdos. Uh, so that's actually... Uh, hmm... I think we've got to switch out Incineroar because they're going to go for maybe a close combat. There's a Zashin can come in there. It's neutral. Uh, no, 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 no. Wait there, wait there, wait there, wait there. Wait there. We don't want to switch out Suicune. We want to go for a Scald, I think, into the Zapdos and then switch into Zashin here. We're kind of limited. We can't really switch Rillaboom in just yet. Um... I don't. I wouldn't feel comfortable switching Incineroar into Rillaboom there, just in case we see a Brave Bird into the Incineroar slot. More likely, we see close combat. Quick Guard. What? 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 Okay. Well, we'll get some damage onto the Zapdos, which is always useful. Uh, and Nature's Madness into Suicune. Yeah. Okay. That's that's manageable for sure. Because now we can get rid of the Zapdos. Although we probably see the the Incineroar come onto the field. Um, yeah, and I think we get the boom in here. The boom and... Mm, do we play around for Behemoth Blade? Let's just Behemoth Blade. Let's just Behemoth Blade. And hope it's enough. But you 100% expect the Incineroar to come in here from my opponent. Might be better off actually going for that. Um, the player rough, to be honest, but it does hit super effective. But let's see what this Zapdos goes for. Some quick guard. I can't believe that. I wonder what they're trying to prevent. Okay, we're going to see the double switch here. It's just, it's just all right. And get some damage onto the Dusk Mane, which isn't the worst thing in the world. We've got a fast fake out going into this next turn, which is, yeah, still all right. Um, we can't prevent the Trick Room. I mean, we can prevent the Trick Room. The thing is, though, we'll probably take... I mean, yeah, we want to get Sweet Room back onto the field here. We... The, the problem is we might take a Flare Blitz from the opposing Incineroar here, uh, where it goes for just Flare Blitz straight into to Rillaboom. But I think we need to we need to prevent um, the Trick Room going up, which is, I think, the main thing that my opponent's probably going for here. Knowing that we've got Zash in, we've got some fat, well, m more, more so faster Pokemon on our team than they have. So... We kind of need to get ourselves in a position where we've got Incineroar out on the field. Uh, and you can kind of pivot pivot in. Okay, just trading fake outs. That's that's, that's super good. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I don't think we go for anything other than a Scald. Um, and I think we go U-turn into, into Incineroar. I think they expect the, the Roar to come out. So I don't think they go for the Trick Room here. I think they just go for some damage. So... Hopefully we can U-turn out with Rillaboom first, get Incineroar onto the field. Um, 
Yeah, get that. Minus one. And we get Incineroar onto the field without having to worry about the, the Glare and Zapdos kind of switching in as well, which is always a little bit of a worry. And if we can get a burn onto that Duskman here, that's huge for us. That's massive, especially with the Misty Train not being active on the field. Come on, Suicune, get that burn, get that burn, 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 no burn. Okay, parting shot. Uh, Tapu Fini going to make its way onto the field. At least the Duskman's minus one now, so that's good. And we can just cycle these Intimidates, you know. Round and round. I really want to go for the the, uh, the Snarl as well. But the fact is, if we go for the Snarl, we're probably going to proc a weakness policy on that Duskman. So it kind of puts me off a little bit going for that. But there's a the Trick Room. They just go for it. Okay. Well, the Nature's Madness isn't ideal. I will say that. We'll go for the U-turn. I mean, we can just Flare Blitz. We can Flare Blitz. We're not intimidated either. Oh, we are. We are. Okay. Ignore me. Ignore me. Let's go for a U-turn. Um, and let's go for another Scald into the Dustman. Because we can get Rillaboom onto the field now. And we still have that. Okay, Photon Geyser. Let me take that. Okay. Heal Pulse. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear not what we like to see but we'll be able to get boom onto the field it puts a bit more pressure okay so we can actually slow then uh, incineral which is interesting we would have liked to have got that scald off before but it's not gonna happen we'll get boom in and then at least we've got a way to put a bit more pressure onto that type of thing but you've got to expect that the incineral comes in on that slot anyway this next turn so we're probably better off just U-turning. Um, into the Finny, I think. Yeah, we'll U-turn into that slot. We could double up into it, to be honest. But again, we're probably better off switching Suicune out to Incineroar. And then U-turning. And then getting uh, Zashin onto the field, I think, for our, our Incineroar. Uh, for our Rillaboom, I should say. Yeah, because the Incineral comes in now. 100%. Yeah. And then we get the Dustman down to minus 2. Which makes it pretty useless under Trick Room. It's just not going to have the, the kind of the firepower that it needs. Especially if it goes Photon Geyser into the uh, into that Suicune slot again. So the Incineroar isn't going to take any damage this turn. Which is exactly what's happened. We get the U-turn. A little bit of damage off onto the Incineroar. We get Zashin onto the field. Which makes it difficult for my opponent now. Because they've got to switch round. They do have an active fake out of course. Uh, so they can go for that. And they do have parting shot as well. But I think what we could potentially do is... How many turns of Trick Room have we got left? Uh, two? Have we got two left? Two turns, yeah. So do we attack here? Um, no, I think what we'll do is we'll protect here. We'll go for another U-turn out into the Zaya, into Incineroar. We'll get Rillaboom onto the field here. So we've got an active fake out for that last turn. Um, Trick Room. And we are... Oh, they go for the fake out there. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, so stands. Okay, that's not ideal. That's really not ideal. But it's not devastating either. The worst thing would be if the grassy terrain ends now, which it doesn't. So that's good. Because if they got Earthquake, that would be bad. <sighs> okay, let's bring... Hmm... Bring Suicune in. I kind of want... Are we minus one? I don't think we are. No, we're neutral. 
Okay, I'm going to Flare Blitz into the Duskman here. I want to get damage onto it. I want to be able to remove it from the field. And if Suicune goes down here, it means we get Zashin in and it's going to be able to, to, to prevent that Trick Room going up the next turn. We do see the Flare Blitz. We should take this. Yeah, pretty comfortably. And what are they going to do? They're going to Earthquake with Grassy Terrain up. Some Seal Strike. Okay, into the Suicune. That's fine. Get a free flare blitz. It's going to put them in a really awkward position going into this next turn because the flare blitz should do a good chunk of damage here. Should take it down to 50%. You would hope anyway when we're not intimidated. And they're only neutral at the minute. Yeah, it's not a huge amount. But the double up the next turn will be. will be enough. Will be enough. Depending if they've got a berry or not because they haven't got the weakness policy. Which is interesting because that's kind of what we were banking on. So yeah, let's bring in Zash in now. Get the plus one. Gotta think that you just protect. Protect, but it's so risky, like, do we They are minus one, I'm sure, with Incineroar. Yeah, they're minus one, so we take that. We've got a little bit of room where we could I mean we can't knock out the opposing Incineroar anyway. So I think we just double up into this slot. Yeah, they could just protect on Flare Blitz us, which would be terrible. But anything that switches in there, if it's the Zapdos, if it's the Finny, they're going to take crazy damage. And I think if you're my opponent, you want to try and... Okay, we're going to get it. We're going to get it. And the Flare Blitz is... It's, it's, it's in range now. It's not in range. It's not in range. It's got the big berry. Or is that a Citrus? It's a citrus. Oh no 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 no! It's enough though. It's enough. We get a high roll. We get a high roll. That's all we needed. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's good. Incineroar. My new BFF. There we go. Partner shot. That's fine. Uh, we can just switch and reset that. Uh, although, uh, I mean, if the Zapdos comes in now, because it'll be Finny and Zapdos or, or Zapdos and Incineroar, it's still not too bad still not too bad. I think for the Finny we need to keep Rillaboom in the back. So it's Finny. Is it Finny and Incineral? I think if you're my opponent you probably want to get the Nature's Madness onto Zashin. But if we see Incineral come in it makes it a little bit easier for us to manage I think. I think we've got a, an easier switch into Rillaboom this next turn. Yeah. And now Zashin down to minus one. Okay, what we're gonna do? Uh, hmm. Just I hope they don't. No, 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 no. Now let's just protect. And let's you turn into the Incineroar. I just hope they don't go fake out into our Incineroar here. That would be the worst. They've done it before, so they may do it again. No, okay. Hope they got Nature's Madness Flare Blitz into that Zashin slot. That's really what we're kind of wanting to see. Um, and we can get the Rillaboom back in. And then we can switch the next turn. Because we need to reset. But it, it opens a door for my opponent. To potentially get the Zapdos onto the field, you know. Let's see. Nature's Madness. Yep. And Flare Blitz. Or Parting Shot even. Flare Blitz. Yeah, that's good. The thing is now, they can't really switch their Zapdos in before we switch Zashin out because we're faster. So we've got that kind of advantage, uh, which is always good. But what we can do is, uh, we can Grassy Glide into the Finny, but I don't think we do because, uh, has the Finny got Protect? Nature's Madness. It may not. I think we can probably get away with a Grassy Glide here. get Incineroar in because I think they're parting shot out and get the Zapdos in anyway it just wouldn't be better probably to get Zashin back onto the field so we've got that pressure for the Zapdos the next turn although we do have the fake out so we do have that kind of going for us and we are going to see the Finny kind of retreat here and Zapdos come in but it's not the end of the world we'll get a bit of damage onto it which is always useful 
taken a parting shot. Okay, so Finny gonna come back in. But that's that's actually all right. Because we just need to get Zashin onto the field now, and we can remove the Zapdos. We don't need to worry about it too much then. And then it's just about taking the Incineroar down, and then the Finny is easy enough to deal with from that point. And you wouldn't really expect the Finny to have Calm Mind. Um, there we'll fake out into Zapdos, and we'll U-turn into Finny. Uh, it's just, are you going to go Nature's Madness into the Rillaboom slot? Probably, probably. But I mean, we've got to get Zash in at some point. And if it's relying on Nature's Madness, then we don't need to worry a great deal about the Finny, to be honest. And I think we just play rough into the, the Zapdos slot, because that, that plus, like if Incineroar comes in there, okay, okay, he'll pulse. That's fine. I prefer that, to be honest. Because the player rough will still take down that Zapdos this next turn. But my opponent's so kind of tetchy about keeping it on the field in front of Zashin. Makes it a little difficult. Where we could go for a U-turn into Zappy and go for a substitute here with Zashin. Because I expect maybe the Incineroar to switch in now. Huh. They don't switch in. Well, that's interesting. So, Incineroar coming in on that slot. Okay. What's this Zapdos going to do? It's just detecting. Okay, well, we get a free sub up. So, that's huge for us. So, we don't have that the worry about the fake out the next turn. So, we can just go for the player rough there. Um, or we could protect on there. Okay, well kind of cover that Zapdos. It has to switch out. It has to switch out to the Finny. It has to. You have to switch it out to the Finny. Makes me want to go more for a Behemoth Blade. Gonna play rough. Are they gonna keep it in? There's no way they keep it in. I think we Behemoth Blade. Oh, they keep it in. Oh dear. Oh dear. I'm going to double up into Zashin, I think. Three minutes left on the clock. But it's enough. Even neutral, it's enough. Okay. That's a critical hit. That is really unfortunate for my opponent. That's really unfortunate. Because I think the combination... Mm, I don't know if the Flare Blitz would take us down, but it would put us into a very, very awkward position. Now we'll get the, the boom back on the field. We do need to switch it out to switch it back in again to get the grassy terrain up to uh, take advantage of grassy glide, of course, against the finny. Um, but that makes things a, a whole lot easier for us, which is, yeah, the crits is massively, massively annoying for my opponent here as the flare blitz going to come out. It's a nice play, actually. Yeah, into the Rillaboom, expecting that switch in. So, I don't know where the Zapdos would have went. Maybe doubled into that slot, to be honest. Because, yeah, the, the, the Finny gets a lot harder to deal with once um, once the Rillaboom's gone. I wonder if a player rough is going to be enough to get the Incineral, potentially. Uh, it should do, actually. It should do. Yeah, so we can switch into Incineral now. Go for that player rough into the Incineral. Get it down to minus one. Yeah. And we'll just do that and go for the play rough. It should get it from neutral. Should. should. Like a neutral attack. I mean, we're not intimidated. We're just neutral. Should get it from here. But depends how the, the Incineroar is trained, honestly. And it's the most unreliable move in the entire world. Zashin avoids the muddy water. Sinner are going to be able to take that. And we'll probably see a Flare Blitz come out. And there is 50 seconds left of the battle. So we're going right down to time as the Flare Blitz comes out. And um, is going to be into the Zashin sub. But we do have Fake out this next turn. So we can take advantage of that. 
Let's try and get another player off. We can fake out into the um, into the Finny, and that kind of locks the game up for us because I don't think they got a way to to knock out Zashin or Incineroar here. We could just sub. It would be the safest option. But the battle is cancelled. But very good game to my opponent. I think it was swayed a lot uh, towards the end with that critical hit onto the Zapdos. Uh, where we didn't go for the player off. I think if we went for the player off 100% of the time we'd get that knockout. But Behemoth Blade. Whether or not we got it on neutral, I don't know. I don't know. Um, it would We probably wouldn't. Uh, would we? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, honestly. If you know in chat, let me know. That would be great. But we'll round up now and uh, wrap up with the rental team for today's team. All right, friends. Here is today's rental team. A big shout out once again to Scotty for providing us with the rental team. And uh, it is kind of very standard Zashin, but it's a very solid build all the same. And it has got that added bonus of having the Garchomp with the Stealth Rockin', which is a tech I absolutely love. I think the Garchomp inclusion in this team is great i really like it a lot it's been fun to play and i would definitely highly recommend each and every one of you to try the team out for yourselves and give stealth rock a go because i do think there is something in that honestly i do um but scotty thank you once again hope everyone has enjoyed today's episode seeing the zashian again we've had a lot of zashian on the channel but you know it is series 10 so makes a lot of sense to play probably the best pokemon in the format a lot and feature a lot of different teams around it because most of the teams that we have featured, the Zashin teams, they are very different in their own respects. They play slightly differently, so it's always good to have a look at those and kind of understand that for when you're playing against it, if you aren't a Zashin fan for yourselves. But uh, if you are, I hope you appreciate the team. And uh, if you aren't, I hope you appreciate the team anyway. Anyway, we're going to wrap things up there, friends. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll be back with more Series 10 very soon on the channel. So until then, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.